Right. Uh, I've been thinking about doing this video and I had a viewer request for it as well. So here we go. This is not going to be totally in depth, but it'll give you an idea and maybe spark some interest in you guys going out there and trying to uh, look at some uh, photographs of dye. So this is a, a an actual dye. It's put in a been put in a micro, uh, microscope and taken a picture of. It it helps if you have uh, contrast enhancement and uh, various films and stuff, plate um, contrast phase plates and stuff in your in your microscope. So anyway, this is a very very nice nice picture of of a dye, and I chose this one because I think it, it'll bring some points across. This is a JRC uh, four five five eight. A lot of people make four five five eight. So I think an LM four five five eight. It's a, just a dual op amp, uh, audio type, uh, audio type op amp. So, um, yeah. So we need to get a couple things out of the way first, and then we'll come back to this picture. Okay. Well, the first idea is that um, you would think transistors are um, made in three dimensions, and that's true. Um, the first ones were just three stacks of, of plates, uh, emitter, base, and collector, and then we out of P materials and N materials. So it was P N P N P N. So P's and N's, and if you look at a cross section of a silicon wafer, it'll look like this. And there'll be regions where it's called doping. You you make one layer N. So maybe this middle layer here is N. Then you can put in P layers in, inside of it. Or you can put in extra doped N layers inside of it. You, you can do different things inside of it. There's these little cavities here. So it kind of operates in three dimensions. And you can put anything you want in these and put them in any order you want. And here's an example just of a simple... Um, uh, NPN transistor, let's say, this uh, region right here would be N, and then this bluer region here would be P, and then this would be N. So uh, the uh, first input here, let's say, is the emitter. The emitter comes in, and then it wants to go to the collector, okay, or the collector wants to go to the emitter, I guess if you want to do positive charge. So the, the voltage will come in, into the collector and will come around here and be all kind of dispersed under here and it'll want to go to the emitter but the base is blocking it until the base is biased and then will allow a path here uh, for the collector and emitter to have a path between the two of them so this is kind of kind of the structure we're looking at and here's a, another picture so there's n and p and n like i say um you can also put on a uh insulator so you could this this light blue here is an insulator and then you can put metal on top of that so that's it's like a pc board on top there's an insulator that's like the substrate and then the the the, the metal layers which can run around and interconnect everything so first of all you need to put down these npn layers and then you can put an insulator on top and then etch away where you want to make contacts and then put metal on top and and do all that sort of thing now we don't get to see cross sections. So when we're looking at the photograph of the die, we're looking at a top view only. So here's some top views of things. This is, an, a, this is a, a transistor and this is a transistor and this one's small and this one's big. So this one handles a little bit of current. That one handles a lot of current. It's a matter of surface area. Um, so yeah, so things don't look like you might think they look, okay? So, but these are two types of transistors. And here's a type of transistor. This one's really weird. This one's called a lateral PNP, and uh, it looks different as well. But again, this is a top view. All right, let's talk about the pads and their orientation. So um, we can sort of figure things out here. Um, we know this is an output due to these transistors here. And we know this is the input because there's two transistors nearby this these guys. So these are inputs and output. You get a mirror image on this side, you get inputs and outputs, all right? And so on the part, pin one is an output, okay? So we'll label this one one. Two and three are inputs, all right? Um, pin four is the negative rail, okay? And uh, does that make sense? This looks like uh, maybe a rail in the middle here. And this is probably a rail at the other end also, this one here. So this is probably probably the other rail here, pin eight. And then we also have the uh, other inputs. We have uh, five, six, and then another output at seven. All right. So that's the way this chip is laid out. 
All right, so we can see the symmetry of this die also, so we are going to only look at one half of it. Okay, so here's the schematic. Uh, this is for half of the die, so this is a schematic for this half of the die. And uh, we have an input section here, so let's start with that. We have the input and output, we know where those are. So we have an input here, and we have an input here. And then these are like metal paths, so we can say, okay, here's a metal path. Where does it go? Well, it comes down to here. It kind of connects to that ring type thing there. Where does this one go? Okay, there's a connection here, and it goes over to this ring type thing, okay? So we just traced these two, two, two paths right here, okay? All right, so we have the base on this ring and the base on this ring. Okay, let's look for the emitters, all right? So the emitter is here, and here's the emitter, and they're tied together, all right? So emitter, emitter, tied together. Okay, that's this part of the circuit. All right, where do they go? Well, they go up this here and they go into this thing. What's that thing? Well, it kind of looks like one of those one of those squarish type uh, transistors. Oh yeah, that's this thing here. There is this transistor, okay? So we go through that transistor and then we come up here and come over to here and then, oh, what, what's that blue thing? What's that blue thing? And we go to this blue thing and now, Again, this is like a six layer PC board. So you get to, you, you kind of see some things and you don't see other things, but you can kind of, kind of give an idea here that there's something underneath this one layer here. Now that layer is actually plus V, but that's, so this thing comes over here and then hits a V a hole here, a connection. And so it's this kind of serpentine thing. What is that? Ah, uh, that's this resistor. And it goes off to VCC. Why does it go off to VCC? Well, it connects to here. Comes over to here, goes up, it goes over this thing, comes over to here, and boom, there's there's a pad number eight. And so that's we've traced this whole part of this circuit out. All right, uh, let's see here, what else can we look at? Uh, let's look at the other side of these two guys. Let's look at the collectors of those. So here's the collector of one, it comes over to here. Here's the collector of this one, it goes over to here. And this one connects us to here, and this one connects to here. All right, now this one seems to have three things, maybe emitter base collector. And this one has emitter base collector, but two of them are shorted out together. Oh, oh, well, that must be this thing here. They're, they're shorted out together. We're looking at this, so we've come down this way, we've come down this way, all right? And now we know that the Q3 is the one here on the right-hand side, all right? So that's, this is that shorted out shorted out base, okay? So the two bases are tied together. Where do the collectors go? Well, one collector goes up a this way and around this way and then down over to here. And the other collector goes this away, this away and over to here. Ah, that's interesting. And then they go through these two blue things. What are those two blue things? Oh, well, those are resistors. They go through these two resistors. And where do they go? They go to ground. Go off to ground. Oh, what about this capacitor sitting here? What is that? Oh, well, this this ties to this, and this area here. Okay, that's on that that one's for the other transistor, uh, the other side of the op amp. It's a dual op amp. That one's used on the other op amp. All of this here is a capacitor. All of that, all of that area there is a capacitor. Okay. This is another big area up here, and we'll find out that that's also a capacitor. So if you sort of see a big blank area, those are usually capacitors. So we have a capacitor here, and now we've traced out the whole thing here. It's this big capacitor that we just that we just saw. All right, so we talked about this being a capacitor. So here's our capacitor, and it gets tied to those other things we were just talking about, maybe this transistor here. Um, and so we've looked at this connection maybe here and comes down to, let's see here, there's a resistor to ground here. And so here is a transistor and resistor to ground. So I think we're probably looking at that. And then uh, anyway, it goes off to the other parts of the circuit. Okay, let's talk about the output. We have uh, the output comes and goes through a resistor. Here's the output, and here's a resistor, this purple thing right there. Now, 
we have a again it's like a six layer pc board so we have a trace this vcc trace is running over that resistor but there's a resistor there and then comes and it splits here there's two resistors and there's one resistor on that side and there's one resistor on this side and that one goes to that that transistor and that one goes to that transistor so we have a, these two big transistors here okay that's our push pull these two are our output transistors these two right here they're, they're big things you know those are drive transistors all right i'm not going to go through the whole uh, the whole chip here i think you see that you can spend lots of time looking at these things there's usually a shared section so this the center section here is shared from both sides and so there's like a uh, there's like a resistor here that is sort of shared by both and then it splits one goes left and one goes right so these these are setting up currents and and those currents go into current mirrors you can see here up at the top here we have these current mirrors you generate a current one place uh like this thing is kind of the thing drive generating the currents and then it gets mirrored everywhere so uh yeah and that's usually shared this this section over here is usually shared between the two and so there's probably some stuff going on here in the middle that i'm just not catching um, but okay uh, I think that gave you kind of a maybe wet your appetite to maybe go ahead and attack something maybe more familiar. This is in LM358. Uh, we see it written down here. And there are things like copyrights and trademarks and stuff. There's actually things called mask. I forget what they're called. They're masks. It's like a copyright, but for masks. And it's a circle with an M. That's what this is. That means that you cannot copy this chip legally. Okay. And so that's why you see China using their own versions, why they can't just copy a chip. They have to make a chip that sort of acts sort of like the thing, but isn't the thing to get around these laws. And so, yeah, it has this uh, trademark here. But again, what have we got? We've got an output, a big transistor. We've got two inputs. Here's a PNP, here's a PNP. PNP, 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 P, lots of PNPs here. And uh, yeah, look at look at this guy here. Uh, he is a transistor that has one, two, three, four, five outputs. One input, but five outputs. That is actually a, it's a five collector transistor, okay? So why do you need a transistor that has five collectors on it? Well, it's a current mirror. If one of these have a current set up on it, that will get mirrored over to the other. So one of these will ma make a current, and then the other five will mirror it. And so that's a very simple way to make a multiple current mirror with just one device. Um, this looks like it's a funny device. This might be a, a two-collector two PNP. Um, yeah, there's lots of... Lots of interesting things in this chip. So there you go. Just a very, very quick introduction to uh, what what uh, silicon dye look like and maybe um, a way for you to examine them and help you out uh, to understand a little more.